Every Monday, I'm answering questions from the audience in the comments, and I have a lot to catch up on, so this week is going to be just that, catching up on questions. We'll probably be doing this for a few Mondays to come, so strap in. I have a lot to say, and you had a lot to ask. Before I begin with what will certainly be a riveting Q&A jaw session, I have to implore you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell somewhere, somewhere up there, and then we can, we can proceed when you're done with that. Otherwise, I'll just stand here and wait with my dick in my hand. Should have been enough time. All right, let's continue. Pink Lars says, I need to know what's your favorite and least favorite video that you've ever made. I love the skits from a few years back of you picking on, jokingly, other movie critics. Those were actually really fun to do. It's a two-parter. It's a saga of sorts. It seems to me that if you've had a YouTube channel for a few years, you have to have some sort of a drama video or be wrapped up in drama. I myself never really have. It's probably a testament to how irrelevant I am on YouTube, but still. I felt it was my time. I was due this. So I manufactured it myself. After Chris Stuckman, you, you may know who he is. He's a movie critic. I, I think he's kind of a big deal to some, but uh, he put out a video kind of, you know, moping about uh, a few things, being personally attacked about a script he did for Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman. Honestly, I don't really know much other than it came off as really kind of pathetic and I don't know Chris Stuckman personally. He seems like a, a fine person and a, a good critic, so I have nothing, no, no ill words to say about him. The video was just kind of like, it, it reeked of that YouTube stank that I don't like, like searching for praise, searching for attention. So in that regard, I was like, eh, I gotta, I gotta do something. This is just too, too rich not to. So I kind of reenacted his whole thing, starting out somewhat sincere and earnest. And then as the video goes further and further on, things spiral into madness. People are not only threatening me, but my wife and my dog that I don't even have. They burn my house down. I'm filming from a bunker, blah, 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 it goes on. And people still believed it. They still thought it was true. Probably because I went out of my way to make these fake YouTube comments from other popular YouTube critics like Jeremy Johns and the Schmoes Knows and, and John Flickinger and things like that. And I put them in the YouTube comments and I mean, I thought it was so obviously stupid and fake, but yeah, they were getting people tweeting at them. People were mad at them. And I guess so in a, in a way, my drama video kind of worked. It was just as real as every drama video is on YouTube. Thank you for reminding me. For me personally, my favorite YouTube video that I've ever done, I I don't know, I've done a lot of stuff that I look back and I think, you know what, that was actually pretty damn funny. On my second channel, I have a life without Pokemon Go where me and my buddies went up to the Boundary Waters and you know, it was for a bachelor party, but I thought, you know, we could do something fun around Pokemon Go. So I filmed us kind of like how pathetically desperate we were to play the game. and. You know, we're like throwing sticks at birds and pretending like they're Pidgeots. That was a good video. I, I had fun with that. I really like the Movie Boss series. I know I put them out just randomly, haphazardly, in the midst of me not really doing anything else on the channel. So not a lot of people saw them and some that did were like, what the hell is this? I did not subscribe for this. Fair enough, fair play. I moved I moved the videos to my second channel, Adam Olinger, and then I have a montage of all the episodes, a, a collection on this one but i did like the movie boss series i would love to do it again maybe on my second channel down the road and maybe not even movie related maybe since it's my second channel it could just be youtube boss or something like that basically i just get to be a douchebag my least favorite video i don't know pick anything from the first few seasons of movie feuds <laughs> they're pretty cringy uh, I, I don't, if it's just me solo, I think there was a couple of movie feuds videos I did when I, when I didn't have Corey and like the audio is horrible. The video is atrocious. Even my most popular video to date, Frozen vs. Tangled, I think is unwatchable. It's just really bad. My worst recent video was probably that trailer reaction I did for Batman where I just kind of was a stick in the mud about it and <laughs> bitter that I had to do the movie reaction even though I didn't. It just came off as very jaded and cynical and yeah that that's not what i want to put out so yeah that was a bad video joshua danowitz also a youtube member asks what do you feel was the tipping point for you going from a watcher of movies to a contributor of movies is that initial flame still the prime point that keeps you going but also what's with the hair we need a reenactment video on your trip to the barber with sound effects and pantomimes 
Is it getting better? I can't tell. It's it's honestly would not be that bad. It looks worse on camera, I'm telling you. But he didn't fade it to very he didn't fade it at all. So it's just this really weird you know, it's it's funny because I was bitching about the the main protagonist on Alien Covenant how bad her hair was, and then a day or so later I get a haircut that's that rivals hers equally as terrible. I think it might be getting a little better. I really can't see. I, I, what do you want me to do? I tried. You know, I tried to be a little different. I said, buzz this shit all the way tight. My hair grows like weeds. It'll grow back fast and then go longer on the top. I, I thought he would fade it. That was my mistake. As for a reenactment, I, I don't have it in me right now to do one on the spot. I have a lot of videos to record ahead of time here tonight. It's going to be a long one. So... I, I will maybe put it in the bank for the second channel when I start posting there again. I know I've covered this before, but just to recap really quickly, the reason I started reviewing movies was because I was a big fan back in the day of the Nostalgia Critic. I, I haven't watched him in years anymore. I, the appeal is far gone. But uh, back in the day, I thought, this guy's great. He's breaking down movies. He's riffing on them, but he still has like a, a certain appreciation. I thought the riffing was a little too far. I thought that the appreciation was kind of far and few between. I'm, it's easy to bash on movies. It's hard to praise them and have some sort of appreciation at the same time, which is what I try to do. If a movie, if I hate a movie though, I will let you know, but I still look for some of the positives in that movie. Uh, like Last Jedi, which I've talked about more than enough. Uh, there's a ton of good things about it. It's just the one aspect that's most important is the one that pisses me off, which is the story. Anyway, when I worked at my last web development firm six years ago, uh, I worked there for four or five years. So somewhere in the middle of that, I talked with a buddy, Corey, who we met at work. We, we both liked arguing about movies, debating movies. And I said, you know what? We could do this. Let's get on YouTube. I know other people, what they do. We can kind of emulate their formula, just sit still with a boring background and just you know, go back and forth about the pros and cons of videos and argue. We'll be in modern Siskel and Ebert. And that was the idea. He just never saw movies, it turns out. So we couldn't really put out content like I wanted to, week to week. But that was the idea, and that's the reason we started. I mean, I was always into debating movies with my buddies and just talking about them and what we loved, what we hated, going to movies every single weekend. So for me, it wasn't even like moving from one thing to another. It was just filming it for other people to hear. You know, nothing changed as far as I'm concerned. And as far as the passion and the spark, that, that hasn't changed either. Sometimes I do get a little burnt out thinking, man, I gotta film a bunch of stuff this week. Maybe I shouldn't, but then the algorithm's gonna screw me over, so I have to. There's always that little bit of a line to walk, but I think lately I've really found a resurgence, a new energy. Um, I think it helps that my kids are now old enough where they can wipe their own asses. That certainly helps. I don't have to wake up at three in the morning and, and still try to do a video like I was doing a few years ago on the show, and you can tell. So yeah, there, there's, there's some life back in me again. Black asks, if you could star in a movie with any actor, who would it be? Uh, by the way, I'm just copy and pasting these questions verbatim. So if there's spelling errors, punctuation mistakes, that's not on me, that's on the person. I know most people don't care anymore. I'm kind of a dick about it. I look at all that stuff, like you put a, you put a semicolon there, you could capitalize that letter. You're missing a word completely. Just wanted to put that out there for my own well-being. It's a really good question. It's a tough question for me to answer. Uh, there, there's so many movies I wish I could be part of. I think many of us would like to be in a superhero movie or a Star Wars movie or... Uh, I mean, I'd even like to be in just a, a comedy, an action comedy, a road trip comedy. As for the actor, uh, I'd, I'd love to be with a lot of different people. I think Patrick Stewart would be freaking awesome though. Or Ian McKellen. Those two guys have been around a very long time. They've seen the ins and outs of Hollywood. They have kind of, I mean, I know Patrick Stewart does. I'm not sure about Ian McKellen, but he has a pretty crazy upbringing, kind of tragic in a sense. I mean, he was sneaking away to do, uh, you know, acting lessons at, at Juilliard or some shit. It's, it's a pretty wild story. I think being in an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm would be great, or even Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Just being able to hang out with those guys would be such a freaking blast. If we're going Imagination Land with it, then I suppose, you know, in this situation, I might not be married. And, and then, I'm, then I'm shooting a film with Scarlett Johansson. That's a Natalie Portman. 
and it's a provocative coming of age story. Let's move on. Baxter Whitmore asks, if you could be in any film, which would it be and what character? I literally woke up the second you posted, smiley face. I feel like I just answered that question, but I'm gonna throw something at you that might be a little different. Also, the reason the questions are picked how they were this time was I went based on the popularity vote. There was over a hundred questions in my last Q&A video. I did the Patreon and YouTube join members first, and now I'm kind of whittling down based on the popularity of that, that like people upvoted it then that's where I'm going first I'll try to address as many as possible but we're not gonna get a, all hundred plus questions I can tell you that in the next couple weeks so I filmed a trilogy actually a quadrilogy of films called uh, water wars there's four of them they're they're epic beyond all belief they star me and my friends uh, right out of high school so maybe in high school so I can't remember exactly it's been a million years since then anyway they were all filmed on zero budget they were all filmed within 48 hours because it's hard to get all those friends together for you know any sort of structured time, especially guys. We have ADD, we're, we're idiots, it's hard to stay focused. So I consider these wins. You can find them, I don't know how. I think there's a Water Wars playlist, maybe. Uh, I have them on the channel, but they're blocked in so many countries because I use like Bon Jovi and other trademarked songs. So yeah, it, 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 you might not be able to watch them, I don't know. Anyway. I would love, and I've always wanted to for years now, make a big budget Water Wars film. The premise was simple. There was different teams that competed every summer in an event called Water Wars. Last team left standing wins the prize, the bragging rights, so on. Uh, my brothers in it with me were arch enemies. He is the hero, I'm the villain. Uh, it, it, it's so dumb. There's training montages, there's over the top drama, there's some limp biscuit thrown in the mix. Very, very, very awesome stuff. But I think in this day and age, it could work so well as a family comedy, which you rarely see anymore. A live action family comedy. Anyway, that, that's just in my brain. Thank you though, that's, that's why I would be. I would be in Water Wars and I would direct it. Ricardo asks, how many pull-ups can you do consecutively? I don't know what the obsession is with the kids and the pull-ups. That, that seems to be a popular thing now. Uh, I've had multiple people ask this. So, I mean, I could throw out a number. Oh, would you believe me? No, I think it would be better to show you. So, come on, let's go. Let me, let me, let me bring the camera into the pull-up bar room and I'll show you. Welcome to the House of Pain. Audio is going to be awful with the echo. I'm going to do my pull-ups over there. Let's see if it stays with me, or if I go out of focus. I think that was 16, 15 or 16, full extension. I have long ass arms, we're counting those. Super Watto says, hey Adam, I love your channel. My brother and I have been watching you since 2017. My question is, why do you think First Class is overrated? It's my favorite movie of all time, and by far, far the best comic book movie I've ever seen. Let it be known that Super Watto's only seen one superhero movie ever. No, that's not fair. It's fine. I like First Class. I don't hate it by any means. It's just some of the characters don't work at all for me. I don't like what they did to Mystique. I'm a Rebecca Romaine Mystique. I like her evil. I like her saucy. I like her sassy. I like her brassy. I'm just saying words that rhyme now. Jayla never looked like she gave two shits about that character, ever. And I didn't buy her in the first one. James McAvoy's great, obviously. Uh, you know, both Professor X and Magneto are fantastic, but so are the originals. Fastbender doesn't hold a candle to uh, Sir Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. So it's just that I have, an, I have a love. I have a love with the original characters. So it's hard for me to go to first class and, and have that same level of appreciation. Plus, I think that K -Bake, Kevin Bacon is his villain is kind of lame. He doesn't make a lot of sense how, you know, the whole intro 
he could have killed the dude that iced his parents, but instead he's like, I'll work with them instead. It, it just didn't really make sense. You know, we have some highlights. There's a lot of lingerie wearing uh, femme fatales in the film, which always gets my motor going because I'm, 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 a, I'm a perv. But when I take what I had before, especially X-Men 2, it's just, everything's just worse in comparison. Continuing on with the comic books, I guess, Dan of Steel, great name, says, what is your favorite comic book movie of all time? This will absolutely not be shared by others, but I still think X2 is, is one of my favorites. X-Men 2, Logan, Days of Future Past, Infinity War. Those are kind of the tops for me. Is that four or five? I don't know, but those are the ones that come to mind right away when I think of favorite comic book movies. I know a lot of people love Dark Knight. I certainly do love it, but I don't think it, it's up there for me quite. It just doesn't, it doesn't hit me the same way these ones do. hey -oh, Gert. Thoughts, suggestions, or remarks for someone else trying to follow their passion while also making internet content. Keep in mind, I have no expectations of gaining any kind of fame from doing this. Let me be your cautionary tale, I guess, of what not to do. If you have a drive to get your content out there, to get your thoughts on, on camera and out to the public, to the real world, obviously the first thing is to keep your expectations in check, which you've already said you're going to do. You don't expect to become internet famous off of this. The second thing I would absolutely say is have a voice that's unique and different from others, which is not really the greatest advice either, because I see a lot of other channels that just copy one another when it comes to their voice and their outrage and the things that they want to drive home. So maybe be like other people and just copy and, and be kind of a fake ass. That works too. Have a system ready. Ha have a prepared amount of content you want to get out each week. Have a starting time for that video to go out. Consistency. Find your voice and stick with one type of avenue to go down. I went down 500 avenues and I finally ended up in a spot where I think, okay, the stuff I'm putting out now is consistent. They know what they're gonna get. They're not gonna be turned off by me playing some random character I come up with, pull out of my ass and turn half the people off that watch. I still wanna do that. I still wanna go back into that sewer and pull something else out because that's the creative part of me that wants to do something new and not get bored doing the same shit over and over. But people like consistency. People like that one fucking thing. And I, I am that, I'm in the same boat. I, I fault myself for doing that. Because when I watch a channel that suddenly puts out all these different videos that aren't the one I subscribed for, I bounce. I'm like, what the hell is this shit? Are you going to put out that thing anymore? Which is why I'm finally sticking to a schedule. Videos come out at 3 p.m. Central Time. Uh, you can find on my community page, I lay out what comes out what day of the week with some random news videos thrown in here and there as they, as they hit Twitter and become popular, just to pull in more random subs. So yeah, stay true to yourself or don't. <laughs> post consistently and have fun that that seems like the, the number one have fun it's not your job you don't expect to be famous so just do you man damon apple he's a youtube join member shout out i remember a couple years ago when you and some other channels i subscribed to explained that youtube was recommending that creators split their content off to another channel rather than having content with mixed focus in one channel to me, that seemed to work against your growth, not help it like they proposed. Do you regret taking YouTube advice or did it actually help you? It absolutely 100% helped me. What didn't help? Not putting out new content or putting out random videos every few months, like two videos a month was what I was doing two years ago. You would maybe get three a month if you were lucky. So that was the problem. Um, no, I needed to focus on one centralized thing, and that's why I suggested it to the previous question. You can't do seven different things, or YouTube will have no idea how to promote you to people. Now, once you hit a certain echelon, a certain tier, then sure, go hog wild, do whatever you want. You have millions of subscribers, you have people that are there for you and solely you. Or maybe you're like a skit-based channel, and that's fine, then you can do a few other things. But no, don't do video game reviews, uh, rants, movie reviews, skits. Like these are things I was doing. I was doing all of these. I, I had at one point eight or nine different shows. It it's, it's such a turnoff. I'm such an idiot for thinking that that would possibly work. I didn't have the, I didn't have the subscription base to justify it. And by the way, the subs are misleading as all hell. Like I have, 
I don't know, something around 60,000 subs. I'm not there yet. I don't think I'll ever actually get to 60,000 subscribers. And that's okay. I don't, I don't really lose sleep over that. But that number is way too high. It's so inflated at this point. People subbed years ago because of Frozen vs. Tangled or some other one-off movie feud video. And they're like, hey, I like this. I like Kung Fu Panda. Subscribe. He's like eight. And then I don't talk about Kung Fu Panda ever again. He never unsubscribed because he was eight. That's the kind of shit that throws everything into a whirlwind. It just completely screws up everything. So YouTube's like, how do we, do we, do we, do we push this guy? Is this guy relevant anymore? Well, no, I'm not. But that's because my subscription base is so completely effed. And I know other channels that recently said, all right, we're starting over. We have, they, are, they had almost 100,000 subscribers, Bloodbath and Beyond I'm referring to. You can go sub to them, they're great. They started over. Now they're just Bloodbath. I don't know if that's the better route, but we're kind of in communication and we're talking and seeing over the next few months what course of action is better. My approach, where I just push through the subscription bloat, find the audience that's still there, really communicate with them and have a timely schedule often to just say, YouTube, look it, I'm putting shit out. Look it, YouTube, look at me. Or Bloodbath, who put out a lengthy community post and a video and said, look it, you're the loyal subs, come over to our new channel. We're gonna put out videos specifically for people that are actually here and alive and present. And that way YouTube will say, wow, they have 90% of the subscribers watching the video every time it comes out. Okay, let's get these guys, they're legit. They're not, they don't have a bunch of bots or some shit like Adam Does Movies clearly does, because who are these people? After I stopped doing real rivalries for Screen Rant and really started to focus on this channel, I have seen subscription growth. It is very slow, but I was losing subscribers last year every time I posted a video because it was just a reminder that, knock, knock, you're still subscribed to me for some reason. And they're like, oh, this guy, unsubscribe. I think I've moved past enough of them now where the ones that are here are thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, dude. And then new subscriptions are coming in from actual YouTube related searches or recommendations, which is great to see. You, you, you love to see it. Last question of the day, some guy 99 says, why don't you just like the movie? Tip of the hat for the reference to a previous rant I did. Real question is this, would you want them to remake the Star Wars sequel trilogy or just forget it all together and live with the disappointing trilogy we have? Some guy 99, we have two disappointing trilogies, the Star Wars prequels and the Star Wars sequels. If you can't accept that, then we're not gonna agree and that's fine perfectly fine, but I've made my voice very clear as to the sequel, the prequel trilogies, and where I stand on them. There is the original, that's great. There's the prequels that are a shit show, but have made better because of all the other stuff that's come out, like the Clone Wars and whatnot. And then there's the sequel trilogy that's competently directed and filmed and blah, 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 but the story sucks. So yeah, we're, we're done. It's game over, man. There, there's no going back. What are they going to do? They're going to CG Princess Leia? They're going to freaking Carrie Fisher her ass back to life. No, she's gone. Harrison Ford wants nothing to do with Star Wars. He hasn't wanted anything to do with Star Wars since the original movie came out. He wanted to be killed off. So Disney said, fine, we'll kill your ass. We already have the new sequel trilogy as far as I'm concerned, it's Mandalorian. This was a long recording session, so it should be fun to edit. Thank you guys for your questions. I will continue next Monday going through the lineup of questions from the previous Ask Me Anything video. And event, we'll, we'll keep whittling it down a little longer before I really say, why don't you ask me some more stuff in the comments? We have plenty to go, plenty of unique questions. There's a lot of good ones to get to. I appreciate all of them. I appreciate you. And I'd really appreciate if you join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Or hit that join right here on YouTube. Like the video, smash the notification bell, jump kick the, the person next to you, and I'll see you next time.